Hey folks, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, May 15, 2018. Looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody for their participation, commenting, giving their outlook on the market, and simply being involved in the discussion. So thank you for all those that continue to comment on the videos or underneath the videos. In addition to, thank you to all those that like and share the videos. Sharing them with those that you think can benefit from this information is certainly welcome. All right, there's a lot of stuff going on out here today. There's a lot of information that I have written down that I want to discuss. So let's see if we can get through at least about 50% of it. Let's do a quick recap of where we are. So we did put in a pseudo doji candle yesterday. We talked about that. This purple line up here at 275, the day before I moved it to 275, it was 274.40. The high made yesterday was 274.08. So we weren't that far off. In fact, I should have never moved the line. That's like moving a stop around. Once you decide where you're wrong on a trade, don't move your stops. I should have never moved the line. I would have been closer to what seems to be at least an interim top in this market, which may produce some more downside. We'll get to that in a second. But we did put in a pseudo doji candle. And here's the deal. So there were at least two I can make a pretty good argument for three reasons why the market topped out when it did yesterday, at least thus far. All those reasons, all those technical attributes are discussed, taught, and covered in detail in the course at Lazy E-Mini Trader. I had plenty of traders that were emailing me, traders that have taken the course that were emailing me on the setup that was coming on the charts. They knew exactly what they were looking for. They knew where they were wrong on the trade. They knew exactly what to do with this setup. So kudos to all those traders. You know who you are. Now let's talk about where we are and what's likely to happen from here. So as you can see, the market came into the 100 period moving average as well as the bottom portion of the last large green up candle. That was a test of that bottom portion of that candle. Remember, we always say it each and every night. Markets like to come back and test former breakout and former breakdown areas. They also like to test lows of break up candles or breakout candles and highs of breakdown candles. We're not classifying this as a breakout candle, but it's a larger candle than the remaining three on the chart or the three days subsequent to that. And therefore, the market comes down, tests the bottom portion of the last large green up candle, happens to coincide with the 100 period moving average. And by the way, look where we finished today. You can argue whether it's up above or below or right on the downsloping trend line that proves important once again to the charts question is how do we frame out the bearish and the bullish case what are we looking for from an intraday trader or even swing trader perspective so here's what i'm looking at so the bullish case would be for example tomorrow and keep in mind we're in options expiration week and that means expect the unexpected tomorrow is whipsaw wednesday so expect some volatility to continue into tomorrow don't be surprised to see large swings in both directions. But here's what I'll say. If we start closing hourly above today's high tomorrow, so that means that today's high, let me just move the chart over a second. So today's high happens to be 271.61. If we begin closing hourly above 271.61 tomorrow, that's going to be bullish for the market. That's going to bring more upside to the market. If that happens, they'll want to fill this gap eventually here. It will look like it was just a quick pullback. This trend line held. Remember, we said it a few days ago. If we break out above this trend line, put in a top, and come back to the trend line, the market will want to test that trend line at least on the first go around, and it can bounce off that trend line. So watch out for that on the upside. On the other side of the equation, if the market were to open down tomorrow, for example, or begin selling during the day tomorrow, and we began getting below on an hourly closing basis, this 100 period 
moving average, which comes from the daily chart, but it's an important level. And I'll show you on the hourly chart what I'm talking about in a second. So 270.31 is the 100 period moving average. Now, looking at a 60 minute or hourly chart, we have a different picture or at least another picture for us to look at. So we have a down move. We had a gap lower this morning also from right here from yesterday's close. And then we basically were drifting lower, but we went sideways to lower for the majority of the day. The range today was here to here, but this is essentially a bear flag pattern. So what I'm suggesting is getting above today's high puts the flag pattern in question number one. Okay, it could still be classified as a bearish pattern, but getting above today's high, meaning tomorrow, that brings in the 20 period moving average. If we jump above the 20 period moving average, we repair a lot of the damage if there was any damage that was done today. And it takes, in large part, this bearish pattern at least begins to take it off the table, right? So we have this, and generally speaking, this is going to result in another move to the downside. Now you see I have another line on the chart, 266.50. You might have noticed that already on the daily chart. Could we get down to that level if we opened poorly tomorrow or began trading poorly, got below the important levels, got below today's low? So that level from the 100 period moving average is right about here, 270.31, right in this neighborhood. So it's very close to today's lows, obviously. If we get, if begin getting below that level tomorrow, that brings in a lot of white space. There's not a lot of support in here. There is a gap fill here, but we just consolidated for an entire day above that gap fill level. That diminishes the importance of that gap fill. It's very important that traders understand that if we consolidate above or below a specific price level or price target that we've identified, we have to move the target because the more a market consolidates, like in this case, above this gap fill, the more it's building energy for another move lower. And the longer we consolidate, the longer or larger the move lower will be. And it will take out this gap fill area. And that's the reason. But you see, we have another gap down here. That comes into play. You have all these moving averages. And that's where this comes into play. 266.50. Maybe it's 267, maybe it's 266, but if we, and I'm not suggesting we have to or will have a hard sell tomorrow, but if we were to get a hard sell tomorrow, and anything is possible for sure, then we could get down to the convergence of the 50 and the 20 period moving average, maybe spike through it a little bit down to this 266 and a half area. There are a variety of reasons why if the market were to get down to or actually when the market does get down to that area depending on how it gets there of course but if for example the market got down to that area tomorrow there's almost no doubt very little doubt there's no guarantees in the market but this one i would be fairly certain fairly confident that from at least an intraday perspective the market would get a bounce off that level at 266.50. I could think of three reasons at minimum why that level would be important and be supportive of the market. All the reasons are taught and discussed in the course at lazyeminitrader.com. All in all, was there any damage done to the market today? No, not really. The market was down, the S&P was down less than 1%. We came into the trend line. We talked about the fact that that would likely happen. We talked about it a couple of days ago that wherever the market does top, it'll likely come to back test the top portion of this trend line. We obviously got below it today, but look where we closed. Pretty much right on the trend line. It's debatable where the exact penny is, where the trend line comes, but you can see visually speaking, we closed on the trend line. That's garden variety, common market behavior. So there's a couple of other things brewing out here. So we had the IWM. So the IWM was actually flat today. So interestingly enough, we had the spider down about three quarters of 1% and the IWM was flat. What's that telling us? And by the way, the IWM volume was better than yesterday, but still less than the average daily volume. Where was the spider volume? The spider volume was less than the average da daily volume. That's a 90-day average, 86, almost 87 million shares. 
but still a pickup from the last several days, but less than average. So we can't really derive any solid information from the volume either way. But what has my interest peaked is the IWM. So my favorite market leading indicator has a flat day. We took a dip down earlier in the day, but we recovered market finished flat. What are we supposed to read into that? Are we supposed to read bullish behavior and the other markets are going to follow suit? Or is the IWM going to catch up on the downside and infrequently, but it does happen, the IWM ends up being a lagging market indicator this time around. It's possible. It's interesting. Right now, I just have no option but to read this chart as at best or worst, depending on how you want to look at it, neutral and the reason is this because we closed today above yesterday's low had we closed below yesterday's low that would have been or at least had a different meaning for me in the way i look at charts you know i don't believe in coincidences in the market i don't believe it was a coincidence that the iwm closed above yesterday's low i think that's at least giving the sign of bullish behavior I'm going to call it neutral, but I can't call it bearish. That's not to say the IWM can't go down tomorrow. It can, but I have to look at this and say I don't see anything bearish on the IWM. That's the way I have to look at it. It's a puzzle piece. It's on the table, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Remember, it's the market's job to trick, trap, and fool as many traders, investors, and market participants as possible. I'm not suggesting I'm tricked. I'm just saying I don't have confirmation of how I'm going to look at this with any kind of conviction one way or the other, and I can't. So the idea is I don't see a bearish setup, and I really have no choice but to say above all the moving averages, we had one down day yesterday. This is not a bearish chart. This is a bullish chart. There's nothing wrong with this IWM chart. I have no choice but to look at it that way. The VIX, however, today will we'll look at the VIX and an interesting big up day in the VIX, up $1.70 or 13%. We never did get down to the 1150 mark. We got as low, and today's, I believe, was the low, was 1250. So we didn't even pierce through or spike through 12. I would have liked to see in that 12 to 1150 zone. We didn't get that, and we had a nice big up day today in the VIX. The VIX closed at an important inflection point today. I think the VIX can and should have some more upside in the cards for it. It could come in at least to the 20 period moving average, but all the way up to the 100, maybe even pierce through a little bit. If we got above the moving averages, then something you know sinister is going on and the market's selling pretty hard. But for tomorrow, could there be another pop in the VIX? Could there be another drop in the market? It's certainly possible. Could we have a retracement back down in the VIX back down to, for example, the 200 period moving average at 1372. That's the flip side. That is possible. That would come with a market that is at least moving sideways to higher tomorrow. But under normal conditions, you would have to call this type of activity today in the VIX a reversal day. The transport's my second favorite market leading indicator. Do we have any information we can use from the transports? Well, the transport's came into the 100 period moving average, spiked through it a little bit, was supported by the lower portion or bottom end of this green candle. That came in at 10,713 and change. Today's low was 10,585 and we rallied back up, closing at 10,615. I think I gave you the wrong number. The low was 10,611 of this candle, and look where we closed, 10,615. That's not an accident. It's not a coincidence, and what it does is it prevents me from saying that there's anything really bearish right now on the transports. Did we run into overhead resistance up here at the top end of the range? Yeah, we didn't even get to the top end of the range, but all we did was come to back test the 100 period moving average, and still closed above the bottom of the last green up candle. So there's nothing really wrong with the transports. What does the hourly chart tell us in the transports? Well, it's very much the same hourly chart that we saw in the spider or the S&P 500 chart. This is a bearish flag pattern, a bearish wedge pattern, a bearish pattern, 
any way you want to look at it, it's an hourly chart bearish pattern that will generally result in another move down. And if symmetry is going to play a role in this particular move or this particular chart setup, then we're likely to find the transports down here around 10,400, 10,450 in that general zone. On the flip side, getting back above the 20 period moving average on this hourly chart would take the majority of that idea off the table, at least from a temporary perspective. Something else very important happened in the transports today. So we have the bearish pattern, all right? This is obviously taught in the course. But there's something else that's taught in the course, which is a tip-off that lower prices are coming. It's something that's very similar that happened in the VIX a while ago. We talked about it then. If you've been around a while, you might remember and go back to the daily chart in the VIX and see if you can identify exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to leave it a bit of a mystery, but the transports did something very important that is usually, nothing's 100% of the time, of course, but usually, maybe 70 or even 75 or possibly 80% of the time, is a tip of the hand that will spell lower prices in the transports. It did it on the hourly chart. If you have any idea what it is, comment underneath the videos. We'll have a discussion about it. It's something very important that's discussed and taught in the Lazy E-Mini Trader course. Let's go over and take a peek over at the queues. What do we see in the queues? Well, we see a pretty much a confirmation of what we saw in the transports and what we saw in the spider chart. It's the same bearish pattern. Likely story is this plays out to the downside unless we begin closing above this level. If we begin closing above this level on an hourly basis, that takes the idea of the downside, at least from a temporary perspective, off the table because they'll likely want to make a run for the 20 period moving average and if price were to get above the 20 then it's going to want to run higher and fill the gap right up here that's the story in the queues that's the story with this pattern on the spiders on the transports and the queues chart the daily chart of the queues we had the doji candle yesterday we talked about it it's interesting there is another time component that's found in the queues chart that's not found in the other charts and it's very interesting because yesterday's high and yesterday's tail or doji candle marked two very important time sequences and those of you that have taken the course know exactly what I'm looking at or should know and if you don't know you need to know for the very reason that it added confidence that yesterday's tail or doji candle was going to at least mark a temporary top could have taken obviously a trade at the end of the day when this was put in with a planned stop out above yesterday's high we talked about that yesterday that's the proper trade the broker dealer index we have to look at the financials and we're going to talk about some other financial related stuff including bonds tonight and specifically because there was a big day a big sell-off in bonds a big spike in yields and that was discussed ad nauseum in the media today and therefore became certainly one of the reasons for the downside activity in the market today. There was another reason, right? We have to assign reasons. And those of you that know me and that have been around a while know that I don't buy the news cycle events. I don't buy the story that the market's going to move because the bond market was doing something today. Or the second reason today was in the middle of the day, we had news that North Korea was threatening to break off the talks because of some military exercises going on or planned in South Korea. And so, you know, it's one of those things where the market moves and then the media assigns a reason that's convenient as the reason why the market made a specific move. But that's distracting from the XBD. Let's get back to the broker-dealer index. The broker-dealer index was up slightly today. Where we have The market is still bullish. There's nothing else to say about the fact that we're above all the moving averages. We seem to be trying to consolidate in a bullish fashion. And the reason we would be doing that is to build energy up here, consolidate sideways, to build energy after the up move to get through this area that we were not able to get through yet. That's why the market would be consolidating sideways. Above the moving averages, very hard to see a bear case in the financials or at least the XBD. That's on the daily chart. However, 
when we go back to the weekly chart, just as a refresher, the line in the sand is 297.99. A weekly close, Friday close above that level, that will be extremely bullish for the financials. As long as we cannot close above that level, this is still a bearish wedge pattern that should have a symmetrical move to the downside. But that does get taken off the table with a close above the high of this breakdown candle, 297.99. The XLF, slightly different look but similar to the XBD. We're beginning to consolidate sideways underneath the 100 period moving average. Underneath us is the 50, 20, and 200 period moving averages. Are we consolidating sideways to try and get through this level here? That's certainly possible. Or are we going to turn back down and sell off again in the financials? Well, you can see pretty clearly that we're in a channel. So we've been trading in a channel. And therefore, you know what happens when you go over to a weekly chart. The channel becomes more clear to look at. And you can see the same type of setup that we have on the XBD. We have in the XLF. And we have to get a close above this breakdown candle, which has a high of 29.10 on a weekly close. That means a Friday close in order for the bull case to be put back on the table. Until and unless that happens, you can see right here that we have overhead resistance from the 20-week moving average. And then we have more overhead resistance, which would be at the high of the breakdown candle. So... The bearish case from a weekly chart perspective on the XLF is still intact. We talked last night and several nights about the SOX, the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. It's a good leading market indicator for the tech sector. We did put in the tail candle, the doji, the tail, whatever you want to call it. We did put it in yesterday. We talked about it last night. Could be short against the high of yesterday's high or the high of the tail candle, which is yesterday's high. But essentially, you have to realize on the daily chart, there's no damage done, no significant technical damage done on this chart. We just had a down day. We're still above all these moving averages. We may come down and fill this gap. We may trade into these moving averages. We may trade lower. That's certainly possible. One day at a time, we did put in a tail candle, can be short against that high. We had a down day today. It was down 1.2%. That's a pretty decent down day. Is there likely more downside coming? Likely there's more downside. We likely have to come into those moving averages. We have to fill that gap at a bare minimum on the uh, SOX. How do you play the SOX? The SMH is the exchange traded fund that tracks the SOX. The chart looks identical for the most part. We should have a little bit more downside coming. The 100 period moving average and this gap right here is a likely target, a near term target in the SOX or the SMH. Could there be more downside from that? Of course there can. If we get a hard sell in the market, we'll likely get a lot more downside in the SOX, but we have to take it one day at a time. We know where we're wrong. We're wrong with a daily chart close above yesterday's high. Gold. Gold got hammered today down about $28. So you can see what happened. We broke down below the channel that we've been discussing for a long time. Low portion of the channel. It was the 1309.50 was really the line in the sand. Here's the upper end of the channel. You can put the line wherever you want it. And you can see what happened. We had this you know, down move essentially, broke through or spiked through the bottom portion of the channel, rallied back, and we rallied back. Essentially, this is a bearish wedge pattern. We didn't talk about it here. I actually thought there would be slightly higher prices. Thought we were going to come up into this moving average. We did not talk about this bearish pattern. And here's what happened. We went straight down today. A pretty ugly day for the gold market. After a day like today, likely story is we might get some kind of a dead cap bounce tomorrow. But the likely scenario is that there's lower prices ahead for gold. When you take a look at the weekly chart, you can see we broke down out of that channel below the 1309.50. We got some acceleration on the downside. We're now below the 100-week moving average. It'll be interesting to see where gold closes at the end of this week. You can see that in range is this 200-week moving average, the 200-period moving average on the weekly chart, which would be somewhat of a test. It's slightly above 
but here's a double bottom that's going to be important so there's a lot of areas here there's also on the daily chart a gap that could be filled down in that zone and we'll go back to the daily chart and we see this gap down here so we could fill that gap down here so there's a lot of areas there's a lot of reasons why I could see gold going lower all the way down into this 1260 and to the 1250s even but keep in mind nothing goes in a straight line I had no dog in the fight I had no position in gold one way or the other crude oil continues to grind away it was basically flat today but we're just eating time off the clock nothing has changed you can see what's going on we're consolidating for another push higher we're consolidating to build energy to make another run higher where I believe into the hot zone that's found off the weekly chart 74 to 78 dollars wherever you want to say something up in that neighborhood is where I think crude oil is headed and where I think crude oil will be poised for a reversal that's what I will be looking for up in that hot zone I mentioned before that we would talk about bonds a little bit so you can see here we're getting a breakdown in bonds it's even more clear when you look at the weekly chart you can see us stair stepping our way lower you can see how the market respects and again it doesn't matter whether we're looking at a bond chart we're looking at a stock looking at an ETF we're looking at the spider it makes no difference see what happened market came up uh, to test the top end of the breakdown candle it failed so we had this run up to test the top of the breakdown candle and a failure and here we are but lower levels below that this was a bearish pattern that is now playing out to the downside more importantly I used to talk about bonds each and every night those of you that have been around a while will remember this remember this bearish pattern from the monthly chart we took a run up here we had a down move we came back to test this breakdown area and here we are this monthly chart pattern is playing out there's much lower prices coming for the bond market which will mean much higher prices coming for yields keep in mind this is a monthly chart this takes a long time to play out this is years in the making think about this for a second I'm gonna bring up a yield chart I'm gonna bring up the uh, 10 year Treasury note yield you can see we're breaking above these highs right now we'll see if the market can continue and continue the breakout up to this uh, this 200 month moving average this 200 period moving average but going back to the daily chart for a second you can see the breakout you can see what we did so basically what we did was we consolidated we came took a run up to this 330 area we identified that level that was off the long-term chart you just saw it then we pulled back and consolidated again we're above all the moving averages we built enough energy to break out one more time in yields this is the conversation from a long-term perspective about what happens to the overall economy and as a result what happens to the market when the cost of money goes up when the cost of money is higher corporations pay more for money that means that expansion as a general supply and demand rule right this is economics 101 if the cost of money goes up the demand goes down and typically plant factory expansion goes down new plants new factories the need for goes down so expansion goes down or you have what's called contraction if you have contraction in the economy you will have contraction in the stock market likely story is the stock market will signal and indicate that a contracting economy is on its way whether that happens this year or next year or the year following it's not the point I'm not saying that's happening this week I'm saying the bigger picture is ultimately if we're going to have much higher yields and the cost of money gets to a point where it impacts the economy from a corporation's perspective and also an individual's perspective if the cost of money rises for you and I that means that our borrowing costs go up that means that we buy less house we borrow less money we buy less things we buy less stuff interest costs more that's bad for the consumer it's bad for everybody across the economy and therefore you end up with a contracting economy but the stock market will signal that's coming long before it becomes a fact 
And that's why you heard a lot of chatter today with a big decline in the price of bonds, a spike in yields, and a declining stock market. That's why it's easy to tie those two things together. And basically, folks, that's everything that I wanted to and intended to discuss tonight. So we're going to give it a wrap here. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.